best. You close your eyes and expand your perception outward, taking in the immense totality of the tens of thousands of souls orbiting the chamber. Your grasp on the souls is tenuous. You find yourself fighting to keep them all within your influence. You can feel them slipping away from you as the machine gains speed. A brief moment comes when it feels as though you hold all of them at once, and their force is so great it feels as though they will tear, tear you apart. In that moment, you dedicate your entire being to bending their orbit, channeling their flow in a new direction. At your command, the ancient device became your instrument, spinning to life with deafening resonance and gathering up the swirling essence like thread on a great spindle. There, in the pale, pulsing glow of the machine that set you on this path long ago, you summoned all your strength, focusing on your objective and blocking out all else. With a single, concussive blast that rocked the chamber and sent you tumbling to the ground, you freed the souls from their stasis. Exhausted, your consciousness slipping away, your last sight was of the machine, dark and dormant. Then your eyes closed, and sleep welcomed you at long last. After coming to and searching for some time, you discovered the route Theos used to enter Sun in Shadow and embarked on a long and arduous ascent back to the surface. You emerged in Ter Evron after days of tunneling through the rubble Theos had left behind, and when you stepped into the daylight, you were faced with a different deer wood than the one you had left. At your direction, the lost souls of the Hollowborn were funneled back into the churn of Bareth's wheel to find their way into new vessels and partake in the life they had been denied during Whiteman's legacy. Though parents of Hollowborn would remain just that, the end of Whiteman's legacy would bring about a spate of new, healthy births, with many of the infants bearing souls once meant for Hollowborn children. The natural cycle of life and death had been restored to Deerwood and with it came a renewed faith in the providence of the gods. Though you had killed Lord Radric in his throne room, so strong was his drive to rid his land of Aethasians that he returned to life as a death guard, a deathless crusader for his brutal cause. With the remains of his humanity stripped away, Radric came to see all the people of Gilded Vale as worshippers of Aethas, and one day he led his forces into the village personally to see them all purged from his lands. Gilded Vale was left a hollow shell, its buildings ruined, and its people slaughtered. Even travelers and would-be squatters knew better than to take refuge inside its borders. Lord Radric returned to Radric's hold, where he remained, keeping eternal watch over his barren domain. Well, damn. Following the assassinations of Duke Avar Wolfgrim and Lady Webb, Defiance Bay was thrown into political upheaval. In the ensuing weeks, the streets had become the domain of looters and blackguards. Few dared to step outside their own doors alone or unarmed. But order was soon re-established by the Knights of the Crucible, who, despite their depleted numbers, had gained favor in the public eye for their role in unraveling Widewind's legacy. They were quickly reinforced by returning forces from Fleetbreaker Castle. Having seen both the ills and the promise of animancy, internally, the knights quietly began a more cautious exploration of the new science. Depleted in numbers, but bolstered by their newly forged stock of soul-augmented weaponry and a small contingent of forged knights, the Knights of the Crucible would soon become an order few in Defiance Bay would dare to cross. But the opportunity to build upon their newfound power proved too great a temptation for the High Justice, what was at first a measured approach to Enomancy soon gave way to a rapid build-up of armaments. The High Justice would eventually seize control of the city for his order and place Defiance Bay under indefinite martial law. The destruction of the machine atop Ter Noaneth spelled the end of the reanimated corpses in Heritage Hill. Though at first few were willing to venture into the abandoned district, it was soon cleaned out and rebuilt. The district's horror is still fresh in people's minds. It would be some time before it was fully repopulated. But eventually, the lure of cheap, prime land would all but erase the memory. 
The Duke's assassination at the apparent hands of an Anamancer had caused catastrophic rioting in the streets of Defiance Bay. But those who had escaped the melee in the palace hearings remembered the testimonies of the strange guest who had shown up that day and absolved Anamancy, implicating the leaden key instead. The rumor spread quickly, and soon the popular belief was that the assassin had been a leaden key spy. When the legacy had lifted, people came to see it not as a sign that the riots had been according to the gods' wishes, as Theos had hoped, but as a confirmation that Anamancy had never been the source of the problem in the first place. Dear Woodens instead convinced themselves that the riots had somehow purged Defiance Bay of leaden key spies, and that the end of Widewind's legacy was their well-deserved reward. The rage against Animancers was quickly forgotten, and those who had survived were permitted to return to Brackenberry Sanitarium and rebuild it so they might resume their studies. In the town of Deerford, an underground cult dedicated to Scan insinuated itself into the town's institutions. It became a popular travel destination for the wealthy, who were actively courted by the town's leadership. But few who visited the town would ever return, as they soon found their fortunes plummeting and their reputations destroyed by their own kin. The fortress of Cad Nua emerged as a bastion of security in the midst of an untamed land, becoming the envy of every thane and earl in Deerwood. Legend grew over time of its impregnability, and stories of formidable invaders easily scattered by the Keep's defenses became popular around the hearths of Deerwood and Inns. Likewise, it also became a beacon to travelers, merchants, and visiting dignitaries alike. Reputed as the finest fortress in all Deerwood, people would journey from near and distant lands alike to experience its fabled hospitality and grandeur. Palagina had gone against the Duke's Bell's orders by inventing a new trade arrangement with the Anamenfath to accommodate the recovering Deerwood and Market. With the Deerwood's people still weakened by Widewind's legacy, the Valian Republics easily pushed their would-be competitors out of the market. For her outrageous insubordination and audacity, Palagina was banished from the Republics. She traveled north in the Eastern Reach, avoiding Valian ports and entering the ranks of the kind wayfarers. Despite her bravery and dedication to those in her care, her strange appearance made her feel like an outsider wherever she went. That sucks. Adair chose not to return home to Gilded Vale. Still most comfortable far from cities, he settled in Deerford, which, like many towns in the Deerwood, was beginning the slow process of rebuilding. Believing now that it was the obligation of Kith to be the leaders their gods had not, Adair was soon named mayor of the town, and under his guidance, Deerford soon began to prosper. He expelled the last of the Scanites from the area, and drew new settlers with the offer of land, a trick he had learned from someone he otherwise preferred to forget. With each passing day, Deerford would come to more closely resemble the gilded veil of Adair's childhood, the one worthy of its name. When the dust settled in sun and shadow, Aloth looked upon the remains of Theos Ix Arcanon, his former master. He saw where the Grand Master had gone wrong, and he knew what he would do better. The secret of the gods would be preserved, and with it, the sanity and well-being of all Kith. He donned the remains of Theos' ceremonial garb and prepared himself for the long and lonely task ahead. What? With the Watcher's goals accomplished and his own vows fulfilled, Kanorua sailed back toward Rawatai, thinking on the lessons his travels had provided him. By the time he landed at Tekoa, he understood what his path must be. Standing before the Lore College, Kanorua explained that the tablet he sought had been destroyed, and so a true interpretation of the Tonvi Oratoa could no longer exist. The people of Rawatai would have to create their own. He described the many strange things he had seen in his travels, and announced his intent to pursue the accumulation of knowledge abroad, seeking answers to new questions. True to his word, Kana soon set sail on yet another expedition, and in Tekoa, his passionate accounts inspired many to follow in his footsteps. With Theos defeated and the souls released from sun and shadow, healthy children were born once again in the Deerwood. The grieving mother sought a place where she might do penance for the birthing bell. 
she returned to Deerford, where, to the astonishment of the villagers, she delivered the first healthy child in over a decade. She remained there, and with each new birth, she saw a measure of hope restored to the Deerwood, and a measure of grace for her own troubled past. Durrance used Magrin's strength only until Theos had been cast from the world, and then swore off her influence entirely. Regret came to weigh heavily on his mind, and a man who had never previously lacked for words or opinions came to embrace silence and contemplation. He continued to wander, penniless and destitute, searching now not for the reason for his goddess's silence, but for a mechanism for revenge. The charred robes he continued to wear as a reminder that he had been burned by his goddess, and not just by the flames of the godhammer. You and Sagani never found Persok together. The Adra figurine had gone dark by the time they emerged from Sun and Shadow, and it was another month before Sagani finally accepted that Persok's trail had gone cold again. Her search took her beyond the Deerwood and as far as the living lands. She saw the great coastal cities of Rawatai and the ruins of Old Valia, absorbing the details of these strange and distant lands. Twenty years passed before the Adra figurine finally glowed again. When it did, she followed its signal to a quiet hamlet on the outskirts of Adir. There, she met a young farmer and told her of her past as an elder of Masuk. Sagani returned to a village that had forgotten her face, but remembered her story. Masuk greeted her with cautious warmth, and Sagani found that their ways had become strange to her. She also learned that Kalu had perished of winter fever a few years before, and her middle child, Najuo, had died in a raid. But she found her daughter Yakona a hunter and mother of three, and her son Malak a builder of mighty walls. In them, she came to find her place in the village, and the familiar contours of a world that had changed in her absence. For you, the death of Theos brought an end to your waking visions, and a silence to the whispers of the past. In their absence, you were able to sleep. The questions of a distant lifetime ceased to trouble your soul. All that remained was what to make of the answer. But at the moment, there was little to be done, and the matter would have to wait. A long journey loomed ahead. Damn. Well, that was Pillars of Eternity. Partly. Uh, great game. Great game. Good job. Well, amazingly well written story. Um, I think I'm gonna do a, uh, maybe give it some time, right? Give it a little bit of time and uh, eventually come back, try it on like the hardest difficulty or something. I mean, I know what I want to do now, so there's that. Um, Maybe get the, the ultimate story, doing all the side quests and stuff, especially with the companions. I want to see what Aloth, Sagani, uh, and Grieving uh, Mother, and the other companions that we never found, what, what their story would have been like otherwise. I don't know if I'm going to pick a different ending as far as the souls go. Mm. I really like the idea of returning to the wheel, but maybe if I don't side with any of the gods, then it's just like, I'm gonna do my own thing. So, it is late. I am gonna go to bed. I hope you guys have enjoyed yourself. This was quite the game to go through. This is, I think it's gonna be like, last I did the math, this is over 50 hours, maybe 55, 56 at this point maybe even 60 so if if you're looking for a recommendation like if you're watching this on YouTube by now play it There's, it's rare that a game gives you so much story that actually matters in the end and a, like a pretty damn good experience